There's a fish. Yeah. They, not a very big one, not exactly what we're after, but it's, it's the species I'm after, folks, or one of them. That fish was pretty deep, which is surprising to me. As high as this water is, that's a little red ear. He's actually big enough to eat if he was hungry. Well, today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, something that I've done in the past, and I love to do it, and that's to catch these wintertime bluegill and shell cracker. Let's let him go. Go on back, boy. A lot of different techniques to catch these fish in the wintertime, but this is probably amongst one of my best that I like to do. <laughs> Now, in the winter, bluegill and shellcracker conjugate, uh, and big ones, if you can find them. And I don't, I'm not for sure that I can find them today, but I'm going to hunt them. Now, this is just a little point coming out of a creek mouth. And um, this is a, a prime place to find fish grouped up, especially in weather and water conditions like this, but this water is unusually high. And that first fish sort of told me a story because usually I'll catch them back here in the mouth of a creek, right in the mouth of it, right? That's where they usually uh, congregate under conditions like this, but the water is a lot higher than it normally gets this time of the year. Uh, it's backed up, it's high, so I may have to fish different. And obviously, now right here, right where I made that cast is the actual drop off. And I caught him right at the base of the drop off. And I'm looking for a group of fish. Even though the, the water's high, muddy, we should be able to find a school of big shell cracker or bluegill. Let me say that, we should be able to. But if not, we're just going to catch scattered fish. I'm out here to catch them. I love to catch bluegill and shell cracker. Mm, I think I just got a bite right there. I see my line jump. Yeah, there he is. There's one. Now this one's fighting. This is a good fish right here. That ain't bad at all. That's a, a good bluegill right there. That's a good one right there. Because the reason why he's good is because he's got eyes and a tail. And I'm confident we're going to catch fish today, but they're scattered. They're not grouped up so far. But that's, that's what we're looking for, that and a little bit bigger. I took some time getting him loose. There goes my scissors. <laughs> there he goes. I tell you what, folks, it's a great method, even on a tough day or technique. What I'm doing right here, I'm using two-pound test line, high-vis line, and I have another rod rigged up down below me that has two-pound fluorocarbon. Real limber rod. This is an ultralight rod. Shakespeare Supreme. It's the oldest rod I own. Um, like I said, two pound test line. This is a squirrel tail jig. Little bitty light thing. I mean, it's, I believe it's, it might be 128th of an ounce. Might be. And I have a half a night crawler on it right now. Now what I do is simple. I just let it hit the bottom, which it's almost on the bottom right now. Okay, it just got, it's just now on the bottom. And I just move it real slow, like fishing a plastic worm, but a lot slower. That's all I'm doing. I'm just hopping it a couple inches at a time like that despite where I find them. And that right there, 
This technique right here, I've put more big shell cracker and bluegill in the boat by doing this in the winter than anything I've ever done. Slow is the key. These fish are pretty dormant right now. There's fish. Out here in open water, there's just they're scattered up everywhere. That's just all they are to it. This is a good one. That's a gem dandy. Yeah. That's a lot better quality fish right here. Come on in here, golly. Man, oh man. That's what I'm looking for right there. That's exactly what we're looking for. He was in uh, 11 feet of water out here so maybe there's some scattered shell cracker out here man oh man so let's let him go right there that fish was deep techniques what's important right here folks barely move it let the bait sit there just a little while water's cold barely move it let it sit there a little bit you're covering water. You're not covering it quick because if you do that, you're not going to get a bite. There's one. They're, they're picking this bait up slow, folks. There we go. Man. Y'all see that? <laughs> they, they're just picking it up and crawling with it. Now, there's a shell cracker. There's a shell cracker, a red ear sunfish. Here in the south, we call them shell cracker. He ain't a very big one, but he's a, he's what I'm looking for. I like to catch them all, but between the two, I would rather catch shell cracker than bluegill, no doubt. Now, there's some big ones in here if we can get them to bite. There's no doubt about it. If the wind has stayed like this, We'll probably end up catching a few. Let's let him go right there. Beautiful fish. Now, on two-pound test line, I mention this about every time, but I, I don't hardly, I rarely use a loop knot, just on occasions, but usually it's going to be a Palomar knot. It's going to be a Palomar or a Trilene knot. Uh, they're the two strongest knots that I know of, or I have a lot of confidence in them, folks. There's a fish. My goodness, that one almost snuck up on me, folks. He hit so light. Golly, this is a good one right here. They're all good ones, but this is a pretty good one right here. Let's check him out right here. Yeah, that's a pretty good shell cracker. For the day it is. Now, I've caught some monsters, monsters back up in here in these creeks. And that's not a monster, but that's a great eating size, no doubt. Let's let him go. They're starting to pick up now a little bit. I'm getting in tune with them. Go on back there. Fishing is a sport. Oh, I'm about to scream. I'm about to scream. It's second to none. Woo! I just want to go ahead and explain to y'all why I'm fishing this way. And one of the main reasons is it's right in the middle of the winter. The water temperature is extremely cold. In fact, here in North Alabama, I don't know if I've seen the water temperature quite this cold in a long time. It's been several years. We've been having mild winters for the last 10 years, but this winter has been extremely cold. The water temperature has plummeted way down. So I'm having to fish a little bit different. But now I usually always do this two or three times in the winter time, this technique, because I love to fish like this. 
And it's the uh, same thing. Two pound test line, a squirrel tail jig. Now this squirrel tail jig is a 1 28th of an ounce right there. Two pound test line tied with a Palomar knot, half a night crawler. Now the reason I like this is because it forces you to fish very slow along the bottom. Can't fish it fast. It matches the metabolism of the fish or the activity level of the fish. And once you find a big school of shell cracker or bluegill, which I haven't been very successful in doing, but I'm going to go back and look for some more. I mean, I want to find them. I'm talking about big shell cracker. But even if I can't find them, I can still catch some good fish by doing this. Light, because it forces you to fish very slow, hopping it on the bottom. Very effective technique. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all do for this channel. Hey, man. Doggone. Cock. That's Cotta. I got Cotta in there. I love that coffee. Woo! Oh! And remember, go fishing when you can, but call this good bird.